it's of course, first of all, it's decision of which portfolio to which candidate to allocate is taken by president. So President von der Leyen, she saw me in this role uh, initially when I came first time to meet her in Brussels. She told me straight away that she sees me as a youngest commissioner working on climate questions. Uh, this is the questions which are raised by the young people that we can find a common language and she would love to see me uh, working on, on, on this portfolio. As I said before, I, I served as the Minister of Economy and Innovation, so of course it, uh, it, it, was, um, it was an interesting proposal, but as I said, you know, I took it straight away as a very meaningful uh, proposal uh, for a meaningful portfolio, and most importantly that um, uh, I think it's momentum right to hold this portfolio. If we took, you know, uh, five or ten years ago, it would be much harder for me to do things uh, because Europe was in economical crisis and, of course, the priorities were different. Uh, uh, how to save jobs, uh, how to maintain growth, uh, economic growth, and, of course, unfortunately, but environmental agenda would be not prioritized as it is today. Today, it's a uh, top priority in the EU and of course it's very exciting to be in this new team. Being young is, 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 is definitely not an advantage to the way. Uh, being young, young also gives you many challenges. Uh, and there is sometimes that good saying that 10 years of experience comes within 10 years. So uh, being young, sometimes you have to always work hard to over-deliver, to prove uh, that, 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 that you work. Uh, uh, I think most importantly is respect. Hmm? Respect to different age, to different views. Uh, uh, and that's, that's the most uh, important, being able to hear. Because people have fantastic ideas uh, and not, don't be afraid to learn every day, you know. I said to myself uh, that uh, it doesn't matter what position I'm going to be, commissioner, student, uh, um, member of the parliament, head of unit as I was uh, before, uh, I never stop learning every day. And there is, you know, lots of people, your teachers, um, your parents. Uh, uh, people you admire never stop learning something, something what, what suits you and, 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 and that, that will make you strong despite your age. It's not the easiest job for sure, it takes lots of time. It's uh, when we speak with the colleagues Commissioner, in average, during a day works about 13, 15 hours. So of course it's 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 uh, it's, it's it's not easy. But again, you 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 given with the with a huge task, with the task and expectations to deliver. Uh, and, and you know, it, it, I think it would be just uh, wrong and um, uh, unfair not to not to not to deliver. who supports me and uh, I have uh, at least two services who, who help me a lot is Digimal and Digi as you could understand from their names one is focusing on environment the other is on uh, maritime affairs uh, and definitely without them uh, I couldn't do well in, in, in my capacities and then we have you know excellent people around the EU who help facilitate Meetings like like that, so of course uh, there is uh, there is lots of help uh, there is lots of help provided. Uh, to me. I woke up I wake up very early, uh, around half past five usually. Uh, I, I, I usually be uh, at work uh, at around 7 uh, in the morning, but 
I just can't, it, it depends on, on, on people, of course, but I can't start day at 9, uh, for example. For me, if I st start day at 9, then I think that half of the day is gone. <laughs> and it's almost lunch time, and then uh, you, 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 you don't manage to do your thing. So uh, I usually start with the, with the morning news. So I read the morning news briefs and, and, and see what happened. And, uh, around the EU in different countries, if there were elections or so on, or what is the, the, the new Western wraps. And uh, then, of course, I go over my agenda. Usually, uh, when I enter my office, I met with, uh, with the briefings for the day. Um, then I, of course, go over the, over the briefings, see who do I have to meet, speeches I have to deliver. I go over the speeches, I change them or, or mark the way I like, and, and etc. My day doesn't have a sort of set time of end. It can end at 10, 11, it can end at 8, uh, it can end at 6, um, if it's uh, not too often, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, so, yes, uh, usually it's a, it's a meeting, uh, it's a, uh, Participation in different discussions, uh, delivering speeches. Uh, it's a meetings with, with with my team, with services uh, on, on, on decisions we have to take, uh, uh, additional discussions, uh, and and and, and etc. In between, I always have coffee. <laughs>
which is going uh, to come uh, with a lot of legislation, especially on the product policy, so that products uh, we use uh, would be uh, produced in a sustainable way, that they could be reused in our economy, so we would decrease the pressure on biodiversity, uh, we would decrease the pressure on uh, resource extraction, extraction and could reuse them in, in the economy. So the waste, which is a problem, we need to turn that into solution into solution which can uh, be you know uh, working in, the, in, in in our economy so that will definitely will require lots of legislation and the third uh, part of my portfolio is zero pollution ambition as i said you know uh, it's about the clean water about the clean air and clean chemicals and of course my goal in those five years so we meet and we don't drink water from plastic bottles but we drink water from the tap anywhere in europe that would be the great achievement. And of course here, when you go for a run or a walk uh, with your friends, so you wouldn't need to check on your app uh, air quality. You would be sure that it's, it's, it's perfect. So transition is going to touch upon many areas, transport, energy, that's probably the most important. Uh, from my part, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, very important is biodiversity. Uh, and by biodiversity, we're talking about, you know, halting the biodiversity loss from the human activities. Because biodiversity, it's everything that basically surrounds us. For example, pollinators, bees. Uh, without them, uh, food which you can see today on the shelves, we wouldn't have even half of it. Uh, they are extremely important. Uh, so only having healthy biodiversity ensure us a healthy uh, food supply. Then uh, our forests, our oceans, uh, it is extremely important uh, to build resilience there. If they absorb enormous amounts of CO2. And they can only do that by being healthy. So, of course, that will require uh, certain changes in legislation, in activities we do in sectors like energy transport, agriculture, or even uh, fisheries. Uh, but this is all in order to maintain the sustainability and in order to maintain the long-term activities. Uh, when it comes to circular economy, Again, it's uh, an opportunity. Yes, that will require legislation changes on products which are put on the EU market. Uh, that will probably require legislation changes so good that you all would have a right to repair uh, the goods which you use every day in your life. That they wouldn't be glued and sticked and the, the parts uh, couldn't be changed but uh, they actually would be repairable. That again, when we talk about repairable, it creates additional jobs. Uh, so there is definitely lots of opportunities. Of course, that will require certain uh, legislation changes. Uh, but I think there is a, a lot of uh, meaningful and positive agenda. Like, for example, last uh, initiative, uh, before just the Commission stepped into office on a, on a ban of single use of plastics. Absolutely positive initiative. Uh, which will decrease uh, huge pressure on our oceans and, 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 and seas, on, on our land, on soil, and in the end of the day, it's a legislation. Good question uh, from my portfolio. So, that's correct. Uh, we still have sea basins and uh, stocks which are overfished. Of course, the situation is much better than we had uh, a few years ago. Uh, only this December Council, we have managed to reach uh, an agreement with the ministers uh, to have a sustainable fishing of those stocks which are EU and scientifically assessed. I think we need to increase the scientific assessment of more stocks so we would have scientifically uh, backed data. Then we have a perfect argument and leverage to talk with the fishermen and women communities who, let's not forget, also depend on the catch 
Uh, and it's always important to balance sustainability, economic, and social aspects. Uh, so this is the key to go forward. Sometimes we need to take measures which are, which at the time seems painful for uh, fishermen and women communities, but uh, in a few years we see that they are rewarding. And, and sea bass is one of those uh, stocks which today we can probably talk. You know, four years ago, uh, decision taken in the council to decrease the catch of sea bass, and it was especially very vocal here in France. Um, led us to recover of CBAS stocks that this December Council it wasn't even on the agenda of discussion and, 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 and the uh, bag size, I know I'm talking very technically for recreational fishing was increased. So we see that EU uh, legislation works it just has to be properly implemented and of course we will work uh, a lot on uh, filling that implementation gap of uh, making sure that our fishermen and women are not left alone uh, to fight with that implementation, uh, that we spend taxpayers' money, EMFF budget, which we will have on exactly helping them to implement the CFP, on implement the regulations, which are the ones destined to reach our common goals and, and overfishing. You are very well informed. <laughs> so let's say we are prepared and the services are prepared to begin negotiations at the moment we're waiting for a mandate from the council which will be issued on 27th of February. Um, as you know there were many calls, alarms on Brexit, so we will be prepared for, for a while. And the moment we get the mandate, we will be ready to sit down with our British colleagues and mutually uh, beneficial uh, agreement. So, first of all, usually if there is any restriction on any stocks, it's uh, scientifically based and scientifically backed. So, it's not that you know I wake up one morning and say now we don't fish for cod. No, we just have a scientific data which shows that cod is in terrible situation uh, and we need to protect it. Then the Commission has to step up uh, and propose a plan of how to decrease uh, bycatch of, for example, cod. Uh, but most importantly, that those decisions are not taken by Commission on its own. Uh, we have Council where all the member states are involved and they have to support, they can amend, uh, change commission position. So it's not that the commission dictates something from the top, it's a decision taken by all uh, member states. And speaking about the fishermen and women communities, I'm always eager to meet and talk with them. And I can say only one thing, sustainability is key for their uh, long-term livelihoods. Because if there would be no fish in the sea, there would be no fishermen and women. There would be no businesses, uh, and we would need to find uh, another activities for them. So it's very important, as I said at the beginning, to maintain that balance between sustainability, economic, uh, and, 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 and social activities. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it takes painful decisions, and we're always ready to assist uh, member states on, on those areas. Uh, but that uh, allows us to, to have a long-term gain and, and, and to keep their activities years and years afterwards. Absolutely correct. So the first step which we have to take uh, is uh, banning intentionally added microplastics. We have to make sure that products which are made, uh, that they made without intentionally added microplastics. And um, we already, through the research and innovation, uh, come up with solutions. And I know that the industry is already eager to come up uh, uh, with solutions to replace microplastics. 
and this is what we have to reach. There is no other way. Exactly as you have said, uh, microplastics are everywhere. Uh, they not only in our groundwater, it's water we consume, but they are already in uh, our uh, organisms, and it has to change. So the first step is intentionally added microplastics in the products, which uh, has to be excluded. Very good question. I, I think, you know, when we speak about uh, ecological problems, first of all, uh, our uh, everyday uh, reassessment of our everyday uh, carbon footprint would be a great step forward. And, you know, you're already doing the right thing. You came with the, with the not with the, with the uh, um, you came with the reusable, um, yes, bottle. Uh, that's already a great step. Uh, then you know you can start with the food uh, you eat uh, every day. Do you waste food or not? Food waste is a huge problem in the EU. Uh, then with your clothes, uh, do you wear it for uh, a few days and then just throw it away? Uh, because it took uh, lots of time to produce uh, jeans you wear, to produce jackets you wear. Uh, <coughs> lots of water was uh, wasted uh, in, in that process. And uh, is it going to be landfill uh, wasted, uh, you know, in, in, in a period of, of just a month? So there is lots of uh, things which could be done. Uh, I really do like that young people are the ones who are not afraid of public transportation, uh, the ones who are not afraid to walk. Um, we can see new developments like, uh, you know, uh, electric scooters who are there on the streets. It's a great innovation. It's only been a little bit abused by people, you know, throwing them and, 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 and you know, leaving them as it is. We have to be responsible with those innovations. Uh, but there is lots of solutions. And of course, reassessing our everyday uh, carbon footprint is, is, is very important and spreading that uh, inside the families too. Uh, I, for example, we don't use uh, single-use plastics in the family for already probably three years. Uh, at some point, my wife, uh, you know, she, she introduced it and we teach our children, you know, to drink without any straws or anything. And it's a very simple solution. And uh, they already grow in an environment which uh, doesn't surround them with single use of plastics. Then, of course, recycling is important, but uh, recycling is sort of a solution to a problem, but uh, we don't really fight the causes. So we have to fight the causes. And, and we, uh, <coughs> decrease um, uh, our carbon footprint as much as possible and then I think the progress can be done terrifically huge, uh, especially speaking about the consumption because we uh, live better and better. We have more and more money, population is growing uh, and, and, and that consumption is only increasing and with that increase of consumption of course we put additional pressure on the nature. So let's reassess or we really need everything what surrounds us or it can be much much more simple and i'm happy that it comes into trend uh, uh, for example you know young people are not fans of black friday uh, but they are fans of white monday uh, which is you know supporting the uh, local uh, stores and not actually going to to, to, to to the stores to hunt for for for, for discounts uh, there is many great trends which already getting getting in line I'm happy that it's spreading fast with the social media and, 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 and this, this makes uh, my job much easier. My car, my car is hybrid, uh, but uh, the most important part that uh, my commission's car is, 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 is not. And, and I'm happy that commission is reassessing its footprint as a whole. And uh, now we're going through the change of changing uh, cars, of looking at the commission buildings. Uh, we don't have, for example, in the cabinet, we already have a very strict rules of, uh, of um, uh, in general, of, of, of our fo uh, fo footprint. We have a Digimaya here who uh, have, uh, in this is the service uh, I'm responsible for, who actually have six pledges of how they're going to decrease their carbon footprint by 9% this year and they are in the front run of the whole commission. So it's definitely going on 
uh, around uh, us. I'm doing that uh, in my family uh, as much as I can as well. My car is uh, now, I think, six or seven years old, so I will have a chance to change it, and definitely it's going to be electric. <laughs> if I may add just one thing, um, in particular after the, um, the visit of Commissioner uh, responsible for environment in Paris, um, I will further take measures to bring more the representation here because we have these plastic cups that will disappear. We have already serviced bike downstairs, so the, uh, the staff is using, but there are still some, uh, some way to go. But uh, I commit, Commissioner, next time you visit, you, you will see a greener representation. See, we all achieved that together. No, <laughs> that promise was because of your good question. <laughs> Never underestimate yourself. because uh, there is not enough competition. So what we have to do is increase uh, fund uh, so that those solutions which are taking in organic plastic or organic plastic or organic farming, uh, they would be sort of everyday solution um, affordable first of all to farmers because this is uh, them who uh, do that, who do that work, who put the uh, supply uh, of food. So as long as uh, that activities um, is going to be, uh, I would say, I don't want to say subsidized because it's not a right word to, to put, uh, but uh, let's say that those activities are uh, going to be affordable by farmers, first of all, then they're going to be affordable by the consumers uh, as well. Uh, today, again, it's a new thing which requires uh, lots of effort. Uh, technologies to be used uh, rather than the business as usual but clearly we have to change it and uh, in order to change it we have to prioritize in funding those activities rather than uh, activities which are not sustainable I think we are progressing and uh, of course, uh, in the past years, we have had uh, really strong wake-up calls from scientists. Uh, oceans, uh, our biodiversity, a crisis which we cannot ignore. And then we have things which uh, I think are understandable to everyone who doesn't want to listen to scientists. So, like, fires in Australia, Siberia, California or Amazonia, which shocked everyone. So it's very clear that climate change respects no borders and we have to progress. Uh, Europe uh, announced climate emergency, one, but secondly came up with the Green Deal uh, to really progress the, the, uh, the steps and, and do the steps that's needed. It's not easy. It's impossible, uh, you know, to be very frank, to, to change it in, in, in a day or two. Uh, industries, people, jobs, uh, everything is, you know, uh, dependent on, on some of those things. And of course, transition uh, has to happen step by step. That's why the uh, Commission is taking uh, measures like just transition mechanism to help those who really lag behind, uh, who need measures to help. Uh, who depend on coal, uh, who depend on, 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 on fossil fuels, but that transition uh, is happening. I think with the implementation of the Green Deal, we will see that transition only fostering. And uh, it's very important that we would reach our 2030 goals. So it's important to do everything what we can in these five years. 
So then that transition would be smooth, and then of course uh, deliver for 2050 uh, full decarbonization. For that, we will need even uh, more new decisions. Uh, but that's again, that's a chance, and it's very important to, to realize uh, when it's always uh, negotiations about the about the green deal or about the climate change. It's not a zero sum game. It's not to take everything from someone and give it to, to, to somebody. No, it's not. It's about the smooth transition, not leaving anyone behind. Uh, and actually, it's a growth strategy. It's a strategy to decrease social inequality among the society, which we uh, have to follow. Because I think, you know, we are the first uh, generation to experience the climate change, but uh, the last one who has a chance to, to, to act. So uh, it's responsibility upon us and definitely decisions uh, which are needed, uh, they have to be taken. problems, I would say, but the good thing that uh, energy mix is, is very positive in Lithuania. ...schemes for, uh, uh, for subsidizing and helping those who uh, put the solar panels out and, and, and etc. You know, coal, for example, is, uh, is almost uh, gone from, from Lithuanian energy mix. It's not almost, it's basically gone. So, um, there is, you know, some good progresses, but we definitely can do more protecting forests, which are our historical heritage and so on. So there is every every member state in EU has its own, let's say, let's say problems, but most importantly that member state would have a plan how they're going to fight climate change and the commission is always ready to serve, uh, to help each member state with technical assistance of, of how to prepare that plan and then to follow it. It's uh, realistic. It's, uh, first of all, it requires political will. Uh, but uh, we're talking uh, about, first of all, 2030 goals, which we have to focus and then see what we did. But we have to measure, monitor, check them constantly, not to wake up in 2029 and then decide have we achieved or not. So, implementing of the Green Deal in these five years period is going to be important. Then leading later to, to 2030, and then of course uh, 2050 goals. Uh, they will be consistent. If we manage to put that train on the tracks and it will be moving, you know, it's uh, going to be very hard to stop it. So it's important to to begin. Usually, the beginning is is is, is very hard, uh, but I think we 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 on the right uh, track, and especially by you know having citizens uh, very eager. Uh, Eurostat showed that 93% uh, of EU citizens wants us to do more on climate change. Of course, we have to be careful. We cannot, uh, you know, turn citizens against us with the, uh, with the decisions which would look uh, to them that uh, it's a dictate from the top and that they have to change uh, during the night completely. Uh, it has to be transition where no one left behind and that they feel involved. Every every debate, not only EU but even you know regional, uh, national governments debate. Of course, and for example, when we talk about biodiversity, uh, it's been great achievement of uh, climate change being uh, buzzword of everyone knowing what's climate change. And unfortunately, about the biodiversity, we don't know enough about the loss of biodiversity, about the tragic uh, consequences which can be so definitely an uh, ecological, ecological debate has to be lifted up in, 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 in many and most importantly that uh, ecological costs would be encountered in, 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 in many activities. Climate, first of all, it probably doesn't represent solution, it represents awareness. 
that politicians shouldn't ignore uh, what is going on, uh, what's going on with our nature, what's going on with, uh, with, uh, with our oceans, uh, what's going on with the ice cap. And this is probably the most important and the most powerful uh, thing about strikes, that they deliver a message, message to politicians. Of course, at the end of the day, politicians choose how to take this message. Uh, but I think in the end of the day, those strikes which were consistent, which were powered by young people voices, they were taken as an inspiring uh, uh, ones to, to shape even this commission's agenda. And as I said, you know, the Green Deal is uh, the result of, 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 of those strikes, of those messages delivered, of, of those messages um, shown on the cards uh, carried uh, around. And it shows that it works. I admire all the young people in general, people uh, involved in fighting the right causes. Uh, I admire each of you, you know, uh, being interested in the EU future. So I think Young people have to be active, uh, they have to be vocal, uh, they have to be free of expressing their opinion and this is what we have in you and we have to enjoy it. Uh, and uh, I think when it comes to elections, it's also very important that young people would be involved, that they wouldn't leave their uh, bailout at home and wouldn't come and, 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 and it's very important. Yes, for some of you it seems uh, still uh, voting in, in the future, but it's very important that young people would be, would be involved. And uh, if you look at the Brexit, and if you look how it was voted, if young people would come, we might have a different result. So I admire all of the young people who are fighting the right cause, and I'm always happy to see, meet them, and discuss inspiring crowd um, and it's uh, my duty to take a couple hours uh, from your uh, holiday <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest I'm, of course I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and I'm very thankful to those who organized this, this dialogue and I think it's, it's, it's very important that uh, you wouldn't feel that commission is somewhere there in Brussels, <laughs> Belmont and we only see them on TV or, or Twitter or, or Instagram. No, we just uh, humans like you are. I, I was your age and uh, I was curious about things. I would spend my holidays in, in, in uh, some Lithuanian military organization, but, but also spend it meaningful. So I have lots of respect for what you do. And this was the reasoning uh, being in Paris, uh, meeting not only ministers, but meeting you as well. Dialogues like this one for sure, uh, but then of course uh, uh, being here, I think you know most important that you feel that uh, how you feel, what you say, it matters and it gets delivered. That's the most important. You know, if you if you would feel that uh, you see that the climate change is going on and you you is going completely opposite direction, probably it wouldn't feel you well in, 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 in the community. It wouldn't feel that, that you are here. So I, I think that's the most important, that you would feel that you would here. I don't mean that every your dream has to be fulfilled by the EU, but in general, you know, your community as a young people being, being here, being valued. First of all, it represents freedom of choice, freedom which my country 30 years ago uh, didn't have. And that's something, uh, trust me, it's invaluable. It's, uh, you can't, uh, uh, it's, it's very 
very hard for you to, to imagine what it means not to have a choice. Sometimes those things exist, so of course for, for my country, first of all, it means, uh, it means freedom and then everything was consistent freedom. Uh, for, for me, it, uh, EU also meant an opportunity, opportunity my parents or, or my grandparents didn't have. powerful things uh, which uh, sticks this union together and which has to be maintained. Of course, uh, there is always limits to not only you, to, 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 to individuals, uh, but it depends what, what you mean uh, by uh, by, by, by limits. Uh, limits can be you know, legal, which of course are there, and can be invisible. Uh, limits can be your responsibility in front of citizens. which try to make uh, every person uh, the same as the you know, uniform, they usually fail. So I think this is the uniqueness and, and, and success behind the EU, that uh, we are unique. Each of us, we come with our cultural background, we come with, uh, with, with our languages, uh, but we respect each other, uh, and we learn from each other. And uh, this has to be definitely maintained and, and that respect uh, cannot be lost. I would say, first of all, you know, uh, EU, if it's able to help, it has to help. Especially to people who are running uh, away from the war. And we can never say no to those people. Secondly, you know, immigration, it also, uh, I know that sometimes in the media it highlights uh, on the, you know, uh, bad things about immigration, but lots of, lots of great people emigrated to you who brought knowledge, who brought sports achievements, who, who were just great in, in the EU, in politicians and, and, and etc. So, um, I think, you know, uh, it's about opportunities, it's about help of, and, and being sensible, being understandable to, to, to people's problem. Uh, and if we're able to, to help, when it's a crisis, we have to help. Of course, uh, we have to do actions in order to, to, to help those countries who are failing as well, that, that you know, people who, who forced to run away from the war, that those crisis situations would be solved as well, and you can play a role.
it's definitely going to be the damage. It depends on what sort of damage. Uh, I think we should work all on strengthening the European idea of uh, really uh, putting it forward and showing of those great achievements uh, which uh, EU managed to achieve. And as I said, you know, to you it seems very simple thing to get on the train and go to Belgium or the Netherlands or Germany. Uh, for my parents it was impossible. Uh, you couldn't leave a country uh, because it, 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 it was closed, the Iron Curtain was, was, was dropped on, on, on the eastern part of Europe. Uh, so it's, there is some great achievements uh, where different countries, different member states uh, with a different history managed to uh, agree on. And we should continue in this spirit. And those uh, achievements give us <coughs> chances for us, you know, being free, free of choosing, uh, not being locked in our countries, uh, or looking for, you know, uh, competing between each other, but uh, being free of sharing ideas, sharing um, research and innovation, and making Europe more competitive uh, in the world. I don't think so. Any of single country in Europe could uh, compete with the uh, United States, China or even India. Together, uh, we can even overtake them. Uh, your skepticism, uh, you know, for first, first of all being here, here and off and then spreading this message. Uh, there will be lots of news and you you're gonna live and myself we're gonna live in, 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 in times where there is going to be provided tons of information and having a ability in a skill to sort out that information trash uh, what's wrong what's fake and leave out only with the right one it's going to be a very important ability and skill so I think that's the powerful tool uh, which you will be able to, to have in your hands. So don't lose that ability of sorting out the information which we already see that the internet is full of, full of everything, but unfortunately most of it is not even close to the truth. Of course not. It's, it's not something you, you grow up with. Uh, I, I, you know, everyone has different probably ideas who they, they, they want to become when they, they grow up. Mm. When I was uh, uh, very little, uh, I wanted to be a police officer. Uh, then I turned to wanting to be a uh, basketball player, uh, but never learned to play basketball. So. Uh, uh, so, uh, when I went to the university to study, uh, I studied economics and uh, international relations um, without saying that, you know, clearly I want to pursue the path of a politician. And, 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 and even today, if you would ask me, uh, you know, when I stepped into politics, did I want to, to be a commissioner? I would say I wanted to be a good politician who represents his ideas well and has a tools to implement them. I think being commissioner of course gives you, gives you, gives you that chance. I would say <laughs> Lakers look good yeah. this year. Uh, <laughs> Milwaukee looks good. Uh, everyone likes Doncic, Houston. but huh? Houston, is pretty Houston, but he doesn't have a center, so uh, I, I don't know. How gonna, I, I can't imagine them defending Anthony Davis at the moment. Anthony Davis and the projects with their power. So, but my favorite teams are Indiana Pacers at the moment and Memphis Grizzlies because Lithuanians are playing there. <laughs> so I, I hope that uh, Memphis or Indiana. But to be honest, I think I, I would bet probably my money on 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 on, on Lakers. You don't agree? <laughs> I enjoyed.
high school. I, I, I was the president of, 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 of my school for, for two years. Uh, played played uh, played basketball, but also didn't forget to study. My mom was always pushing me hard to study, 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 and I wanted to do always, you know, go and play and, 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 and do extracurricular activities. But I managed to, to, to handle it well, so that I had a good relations with the teachers and have a good uh, good good memories of school. Um, but I think uh, you know, um, in general, uh, school is also something what gives you a very good skill, which is social skill, and which is uh, you know, in, when I was growing up, phones. Yeah, we had Nokia three three ten. I don't know if you remember such phone. Uh, but basically, phones which we have, like iPhones, and so on, they, 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 they came out very late. So we spent uh, lots of time by engaging with, with each other. Uh, not on the phones, not on the uh, PC screens, but uh, engaging with each other. Uh, and that's also, I think, very important skill not to lose the social skill. Uh, sometimes you might not be able to understand uh, physics or, or, or math. But uh, being able, uh, you know, socially interact, uh, talk with people also helps uh, helps a lot. It's, it's hard to say. You see, I, I I would say in this case I was a lucky kid because I knew very well what I want to do, and I knew that I want to go and study, and I want to do it abroad. So I was chasing it because uh, I'm from a very simple family. I, I'm raised uh, by a single mom, which is nurse. So I'm not like from a rich politician's family who would give you all the opportunities, universities, and so on. So it was very hard to get to to the international school. Uh, so I knew very well what I want to do. I had a goal to get to you know one of the UK universities, uh, and uh, I studied uh, studied quite hard. So that's why I had to. Postpone my basketball a little bit, which <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the side uh, to, to, to really start uh, studying hard. So I think here my advice would be, you know, to know very well what you want, uh, and it can be even your dream. You know? uh, and don't let anyone to say that oh, don't you never gonna achieve it or so on. Uh, things uh, things really happen if you work hard. So, you know, I, I was lucky that I knew very well that I want to study, I want to get a strong degree uh, in the, not in, in Lithuanian University, in an international university preferably. Don't ask why, maybe I wanted to be independent and leave the house. Uh, that was his motivation, but uh, yes, and, and, and it, it gave me very clear path how do I proceed. So I think, you know, if you, 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 you still thinking, try to focus on something. Don't be afraid. In the end of the day, if you if you're not feeling that you um, how to say uh, you enjoy what you're doing, uh, don't don't be afraid to to, to switch. Well, uh, this world is, is 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 unique in this way that it gives you many opportunities. Uh, generation of my parents or, or grandparents, they would grow up in environment when if you got a job when you were like 22, 23 after. The, or college, you have to stick with it for 50 years. Uh, our generation has a luxury of, of, of you know, trying, trying different things and, and not only speaking in, in one country. You know, we have a unique ex uh, experience, a unique uh, possibility to get international experience, enjoy it abroad and, and find out. And trust me, there is uh, uh, fantastic cultures around, the, uh, around Europe, rich of their history. Uh, which um, which is amazing to, to know and find out, you know. So I've studied, I did my bachelor's in, in Britain and then I did my uh, master's in uh, the Netherlands. All I can say it was definitely a great time, and, and, and if you go to study abroad, enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to study, of course. <laughs> 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 That's very important. Uh, 
I, I managed to do everything uh, you know, I studied. Uh, I didn't have to study hard because I came from Lithuania and my English was poor. So uh, then I had to you know, read all those papers on economics, on international politics. So I did lots of translation and so on, but I managed to play basketball for the university. Uh, at the same time, and, 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 and work to, to earn a living for myself. So, you know, the more you do, uh, the more you're able to do, and, 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 and don't worry about that. Um, as we said, you know, I haven't met any, any people who wouldn't be welcoming uh, to me, you know, during, during my studies. Uh, I loved living in the Netherlands, very close, by the way, to Brussels and Maastricht. Uh, so don't worry, uh, people will definitely gonna like you. Uh, most important is that you would love uh, the things which you study, uh, that you would enjoy. Uh, but never forget mm, to do extra activities. I think this is this was the beauty of university that in UK basically when I studied, uh, you could get involved into 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 any activity society which you want. You can, you, you, you could know about basketball only, I don't know, three letters NBA, but you could still come and play with us and, and we would love you and, and, and would, you know, try to do you, to make you better. Uh, you could come with a very poor English to debating society and they would accept you. Uh, so try to be involved into extra curricular activities. Try to always read your papers because uh, uh, that helps also a lot. Uh, I've been enjoying reading a lot uh, and then when I uh, got uh, to my studies the first year was, 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 was very hard as I said I had to translate to myself uh, a lot and, and so I was reading only papers uh, articles which uh, which were connected to my studies, so it gets boring. And second year, I already started reading uh, additional books and etc. That was much more interesting. So 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 do that, and of course enjoy. But there is always a time to be. Uh, don't stick with it too long. Uh, there is a time where you have to grow, uh, where you have to step from that student life to adult life. Uh, don't miss that as well. It's also important. That's a tough question. Uh, let me think. I, I'll be around 33, 34, so there is still lots of time and energy to do something. I haven't really thought about it, I would say. Uh, at first, I want to serve very well those five years uh, and, 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 and prove for, you know, that uh, you know, we, can, we can do big changes in, in environmental action, in, 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 in oceans, uh, so that those five years. Uh, would be definitely a use opportunity well, delivering the uh, maximum what's on my agenda. And then we'll see. Uh, I never I, I, I never run for elections uh, of, of, of European Parliament. Uh, that might be a solution in five years. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, to, to be very honest, uh, I served as a minister uh, in, 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 in Lithuania at that time, so I didn't run for the EP elections, but of course when I was proposed to be a candidate to be a commissioner, uh, you can't say no, because sometimes in, in, in politics and in general, I think in life, some of the opportunities, they come to you only once. So I represent the party which has a green links is, 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 is one, but secondly, of course, uh, we, we started it quite early at uh, the Ministry of Economy already shifting even the EU funding uh, on, on, on to sustainability, showing that there is other side of business as well. Uh, we, we implemented a few decisions which would also uh, decrease the carbon footprint of the ministry uh, as I said, you know, um, that's the problems which cannot be ignored despite uh, minister uh, or ministry you are serving. Uh, it has to be systemic approach and the earlier 
different ministers will understand that regional governments will uh, understand that the easier it will be to reach those 2050 goals of uh, uh, decarbonization. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.